If you have MS, is it safe to take the yellow fever vaccine or does it trigger relapses as it has previously been reported? Today, I will review five scientific publications, including two case reports and three case series. And at the end, I'll give my personal opinion. References below. Please talk to your own provider for personal advice as this is a controversial topic. We begin with a brief review of yellow fever and the yellow fever vaccine. Yellow fever is a viral illness spread by the yellow fever virus, and it is transmitted by a mosquito infected with this virus. It is a potentially fatal illness, hence the recommendation to get vaccinated when traveling to endemic areas. It's very rare in most areas of the world, such as the United States, Canada, and Europe, but it is endemic in certain areas in Africa and tropical South America, and there's no known treatment. Treatment is simply supportive care, such as intravenous fluids and Tylenol for fever, and supporting organs that are involved. You can see various countries where yellow fever is seen, and it's shown more clearly on this map. Please check the CDC for specific guidelines to specific areas, but in yellow represents the area where vaccination against yellow fever is generally recommended. Like many viral infections, yellow fever has an incubation period, in this case, three to six days, not so different from COVID-19. In other words, the period after being infected prior to developing symptoms because the virus is replicated within your body. Body, the symptoms are often mild, and the initial symptoms are usually nonspecific things such as fever, chills, headache, muscle aches, nausea, and vomiting. But approximately 12% of people, and I see different numbers in different case series, develop severe disease, and they can get jaundice or yellowing of the eyes due to liver insufficiency, bleeding, and organ failure. And this has a fairly high fatality rate. And again, there's no specific treatment, just supportive care care only. There's no antiviral treatment for yellow fever. Let's move to the vaccine. This is a living vaccine. It's attenuated, so it should not cause infection, though it is thought to be contraindicated in people taking immunosuppressive drugs. And this is important, of course, because many people with MS in the modern era are taking in immunosuppressive drugs such as Ocrevus, Rituximab, Kisimta, Gelenia, and so forth. So you may not be able to take this vaccine anyway, because even a weakened viral vaccine can be dangerous in someone who's immunosuppressed. It's a single shot. It's not a vaccine series, and it's thought to be highly effective against severe disease. Although if you had it more than 10 years ago, you could consider a booster vaccine according to the CDC. This vaccine does contain eggs, and hence you cannot take it if you have an egg allergy. And it's a very old vaccine. It's been available for 80 years. And generally speaking, it's recommended for people nine months and older traveling to high risk areas. So we don't recommend vaccination of the general population unless you're going to an area where yellow fever as in, is endemic. And the safety of the vaccine is not demonstrated in people younger than nine months. So far, the vaccine looks good, but here's the rub. There are very rare reported serious side effects, so-called yellow fever vaccine associated neurological disease. This includes meningoencephalitis, inflammation of the brain and meninges, Guillain-Barre syndrome. This is a disease of the peripheral nervous system, often causing numbness and weakness, acute disseminated encephalomyelitis. This is sort of a uniphasic disease similar to multiple multiple sclerosis, inflammation of the brain and spinal cord, or cranial nerve palsies, inflammation of individual cranial nerves, such as the facial nerve causing facial weakness, or other nerves causing things such as hearing loss or double vision. And various forms of organ dysfunction have also been reported. And so you could see how we would have concern about the safety of the yellow fever vaccine, especially in people who already have an autoimmune disease of the central nervous system like MS. And this concern goes all the way back to at least 1967, you're looking at a case series of people who developed MS shortly after receiving a vaccination. You can see various vaccinations here, smallpox, typhoid fever, but one of the cases was yellow fever, and this is a 22-year-old male who developed symptoms sh very shortly after, a few hours after receiving the vaccine. And let's read the text. Case number two, in 1942, a 22-year-old man who had received primary vaccination against 
smallpox, TAB. This is a killed bacterial vaccine against typhoid and parathyroid A and B, and tetanus toxoid inoculation. Six weeks previously without ill effect was inoculated against yellow fever. This was followed within hours by progressive failure of vision in both eyes, more severe on the left, which recovered within a few weeks. A year later, he had a mild attack of retrobulbar neuritis on the right. Between 1944 and 1951, he had about a dozen recurrent episodes of numbness on either side of the body, hemiparesis, and emotionalism. Examination in 1957 revealed left optic atrophy, left intention tremor, absence of the abdominal responses, slight ataxia of gait, and euphoria with little disablement. This is, in fact, a history consistent with multiple sclerosis. Remember, this is prior to the time of MRI scan, which is introduced in around 19. Now, one thing that's weird about this case is MS is definitely caused by autoreactive lymphocytes, B and T cells that recognize specific antigens within the central nervous system. And can you develop them within a few hours of getting a stimulus? Absolutely not. So this story is more consistent with some existing autoimmunity that was perhaps brought out by the general immune stimulating effect, in other words, cytokine release from the yellow fever vaccine. This next modern case report is truly terrifying. A 37-year-old woman with relapsing remitting MS significantly worsened after receiving the yellow fever vaccine. You can see her MRI scans in August 2018 on top, and the same slices with dramatically increased lesions in November 2018 after the event. Keep in mind that she had also recently stopped Jelenia. This is a medication that's a neurosequestrant, and stopping it is known to trigger multiple sclerosis relapses, so it's hard to say if this was triggered by the vaccine or simply stopping Jelenia. Apparently, she would advise to stop Jelenia to take away the immunosuppressant in order to get this live vaccine. Frankly, this is very dubious advice. Generally speaking, we would would never recommend someone stop a medication like Jelenia because it's well known to cause a rebound phenomenon without starting a new disease modifying therapy afterwards unless there's a highly specific reason. You can see in the article the graph of her disability. This is the EDSS or expanded disability status scale on the left. Zero is no disability. Two would be mild disability. So she started off at 1.5, very low disability. And an EDSS of six means a cane is required to walk 100 meters. 6.5 means a walker is required. And 10 is death due to MS. And so you can see she was fine. She stopped her Jelenia. Then she got the yellow fever vaccine. She worsened to moderate disability EDSS of 4.5. Then she got IV solumedrol, a steroid and plasmapheresis, and improved back to her baseline, but then later worsened all the way to an EDSS of 9.5. This is very severe disability, though she subsequently did improve slowly to an EDSS of 6. Again, walking with a cane, this is very bad for someone who had low disability. And of course, she may have continued to improve over time, but the article cuts off here. And now we get to the article that truly inspired this video that I've quoted on YouTube and Twitter many times, which is this case series published in JAMA Neurology from 2011. They looked at seven people with relapsing remitting MS who received the yellow fever vaccine. This was at a single outpatient MS center, and they measured the relapse rate in the three months after the vaccine. It's thought that that would be the greatest risk period for all kinds of post-vaccine immune-mediated events like transverse myelitis and Guillain-Barre syndrome, and they compared it to their background risk or background rate of relapse. So this is a self-controlled case series, and this is the same yellow fever vaccine that you would get today if you were going to travel to one of these endemic countries. Let's look at their data. You can see the seven people, and you can see their ages and how long they've had MS and the treatment they received. Notably, they were all on old, low-efficacy injectable therapies, interferon beta 1a, this would be Avonex or Rebif, or glutirum or acetate, such as Copaxone or Glitopa. At the time of this article, it would be Copaxone 
down. And you can see they had relatively low disability at the beginning of the study, but subsequently many of them worsened. So you can see that the two on the bottom did not have a relapse, but the other five did, in many cases, multiple relapses during follow-up. And in many cases, they had multiple new or enlarging T2 lesions, many of which were enhancing, in other words, taking up the contrast eye. And you can see the different types of clinical events, optic neuritis, pain and vision loss in one eye, myelitis, inflammation of the spinal cord causing numbness or weakness, internuclear ophthalmoplegia, this is a disorder causing double vision, etc. You can see this is very bad, and they objectively compared the rate of relapses and the annualized relapse rate, number of relapses per person per year in that three month risk period after vaccination was sky high, 8.57. You can see it here. And the background rate was only 0.67. So keep in mind in modern clinical trials, the annualized relapse rate in the placebo group is often around 0.4. So 8.57 is sky high and almost 13-fold increased risk, highly statistically significant. This is very scary. In the same study, they also looked at biomarkers, which showed some increased systemic inflammation in people with MS receiving the yellow fever vaccine. Just one example here, these are cells secreting interleukin-1-alpha. This is a cytokine known to be associated with inflammation in MS, and you can see it goes up in people with MS receiving the vaccine and eventually goes down, and you can see compared to people with MS who were unvaccinated or people with MS getting the flu vaccine or healthy controls, it doesn't change one bit. So something is definitely going on immunologically. However, the JAMA Neurology article was highly criticized. This is a correspondence published in 2012 criticizing that article. They noted a possible bias in that people who are planning travel are often doing well. And so you're sort of comparing it to people with MS who are likely to have relatively low disability and fewer recent relapses. Also, in terms of the immunological seromarker data, there are differences between the flu vaccine, which is killed, and living vaccines, such as the yellow fever vaccine. And similar immunological responses have been demonstrated with other live vaccines, like the old shingle vaccines. Also, you can't really compare MRI scans that are done during a relapse, which are very likely to show active lesions, compared to, say, a diagnostic MRI or a routine screening MRI in a stable person. That being said, you can't really explain away the dramatically increased risk of relapses. And as I said, you know, eight relapses per person per year is extremely high and definitely would not be expected by random chance. But then again, a study with only only seven participants isn't very large. So will this be confirmed with a larger study? Let's find out. This is a French observational retrospective study on 128 people with relapsing remitting MS, comparing people who were exposed to the vaccine and not exposed. And 32 people got the yellow fever vaccine. So 32 is much more than seven. So this should be a more reliable study. And this was the same vaccine that we were talking about before. Let's take a look at their baseline characteristics just so we know who we're dealing with. You can see they looked at the whole cohort and then people who were exposed, exposed on the right side, and then not exposed. In other words, people who got the yellow fever vaccine and those who did not. You can see they were about 38 years old, 59% were women. Their annualized relapse rate the year prior to the vaccine was fairly low, 0.188, coincidentally exactly matched here. And that's relatively low. So these people were doing well and they were stable. And the median ED ESS was only one. So these were people with relatively low disability and their disease duration was around 10 years. In other words, they had MS for 10 years. Now, interestingly, they were pretty well matched in terms of the types of medications they were taking, except for one thing. People who got the vaccine were much more likely to be on no treatment, 56.2% versus 31.2%. And this is statistically significant with a p-value of 0.02. I don't have an explanation for this. Maybe people who 
decline disease modifying therapy are more adventurous and more likely to travel to areas where yellow fever is endemic? I just don't know. You can speculate in the comments below. Let's take a look at their data. You can see a graph here of the percentage of people who remained relapse free. So it started off as 100% and then starts going down. And you can see the red line is people who got the vaccine and the dark line is people who did not get the vaccine. And it's close at the beginning and then they separate a little bit. And there is a slight difference here, a hazard ratio of 1.3. In other words, those who got the vaccine were 33% more likely to have a relapse. But this was a very small difference and definitely not statistically significant with a confidence interval of 0.53 to 3.3. And you can see the confidence interval overlaps one by a large margin. So there really was no clear difference here at all. And again, this was a much larger study. And I found one more study for you. This is a small self-controlled study similar methodology to the JAMA neurology study that suggested an increased risk with the yellow vaccine. This is published in 2020 in the Green Journal. And they looked at the rate of MS relapses in the year prior to the yellow fever vaccine, then three months afterwards, and then in the following nine months. And they had 23 participants getting the vaccine, 20 with relapsing remitting MS, and three with primary progressive MS. And you can see their data here. So PEP is the pre-exposure period one year prior to the vaccine. ERP is the exposure risk period, the three months after vaccination where risk should be the highest, and the post-risk period on the right side, four to 12 months after vaccination. And if you look at the number of relapses, there was only one person or 4% who had a relapse within that three months compared to 12 before and three after. Now keep in mind, it's not the same number of months, but they did translate it into the incidence per person per year, and it was 0.17 in the at-risk period compared to 0.52 prior to getting the vaccine. So it's almost like the yellow fever vaccine decreases your risk of having a relapse. And it was also low in the following nine months with a relapse rate of only 0.13. Again, this is fairly low in general compared to a typical person with MS, at least prior to the advent of high efficacy disease modifying therapy, only one relapse on average per seven years. They also looked at MRI data and you can see again, one year prior to vaccine, three months after vaccination, and then the following nine months. And if you look in the center, very few had new MRI lesions. In fact, there were only two people who had new MRI lesions, one active or gadolinium enhancing lesion, and the other lesion was apparently asymptomatic. I presume it's the same person who had the relapse who had this gadolinium enhancing lesion. So take a quick look, two lesions in the three months after vaccination, 18 in the one year prior to vaccination, even though it's three months versus 12 months, it's almost like getting the vaccine suddenly decreases your disease activity. Of course, this is due to random chance, not that the vaccine is protective. So we see one small case series showing a dramatically increased risk after getting the yellow fever vaccine and two larger studies showing no risk at all. So what is my opinion on the topic? Well, given that the two larger studies suggest that the yellow fever vaccine is safe, it probably is, though I have no explanation for the small seven patient case series. And I don't really agree with the critiques in that 2012 article. It certainly is concerning, but I have to say it's essentially trumped by the two larger studies with more individuals exposed. It's just impossible that the vaccine could multiply your risk times eight but that would not show up in the two larger studies. In terms of the individual case reports, I wouldn't make too much of that. Certainly, I would not recommend someone stop an immunosequestrant like Jelenia or Tysabri just to get a live vaccine. That makes no sense to me. Now, I have to say, in general, sometimes people are recommended to get, get vaccines, even though they're traveling to an area where yellow fever may not really be endemic. So don't get it just for fun. Only get it if you're actually traveling traveling to an area where they've seen yellow fever sometime recently, and it's a real possibility. I'd be very interested to know, has anyone who's watching this gotten the yellow fever vaccine? What were your experiences? Did it trigger a multiple sclerosis relapse? And do you have any suggestions for future videos?